The bigger aircraft get, the more complex systems also get. They have to compensate for certain things. One of the main things that they do have to compensate is their landing gear. You think it's easy for a massive giant like this to make a very tight turn? Nope, no it's not. This is why you have body gear steering or main landing gear steering assist. Aircraft such as the A380, the Queen of the Sky, 747, have these, as well as the 777, 200, and the 300. In order for this aircraft to turn like this, a very tight turn, and not cause any significant damage or deterioration to the landing gear and the wheels, it needs main landing gear steering. There is so much weight and force that is being put on these landing gear that it does need some help. So let's take a look at it. The actuator in question. Engineers figured out that if they can make the aft two wheels on this 777-300 turn the opposite direction, the aircraft can make a tighter turn without sacrificing any of its landing gear components and tire degradation. The control function comes from the flight deck itself, from the tiller. Let's take a look at it. The captain and the first officer both have tiller control. As soon as these tillers go past a certain degree, the main landing gear actuators will activate. Now time to time, this system does malfunction. And here's a very good example of how we clear that fault. This is a 777-200, and in this situation, the main gear steering actuators or the system malfunctioned or put out a fault on the ICUS. ICUS stands for Engine Indication and Crew Alerting System. As maintenance, we troubleshot this and we found the correct FIM fault isolation manual and we found the correct code. Now in order to clear this fault, what we had to do is separate those scissor links right there on the nose gear. This is to prevent the nose gears from turning. All we want to do is turn the actuators and the tiller in order to actuate or, or activate, I should say, the main gear steering actuators. It's a fairly simple process. And remember to always reference your maintenance manuals and your FIMS. First, we disconnect the electrical harness or the cannon plug right there. Second, we want to disconnect the nose landing gear torsion links or the scissor links. Simply by pulling those two levers, the torsion link will separate. Once that is completed, my partner that is upstairs will activate hydraulics and then he will turn the tiller. The tiller will be turned clockwise and counterclockwise in full direction. This is in order to activate those main landing gear actuators. We want to make sure the computer system is reading them and make sure that they are in sync. And here we go. Let's enjoy the show and watch these beautiful actuators do their job. Massive amount of pressure going through right there. 3,000 PSI that is being pushed through. As you can see, a full range of motion of those nose landing gear steering actuators. The reason we disconnect the torsion links is because, first of all, we don't want any unnecessary movement of the aircraft, as well as no deterioration to the nose wheels. Just a quick side note of the reason why this happens, or this fault gets kicked up, is during pushback, sometimes the actuators themselves are not in sync, or maybe the computer is not sending the correct information, or has some kind of a lag to it. So that's why this happens. It's a common thing, but it's very easily cleared. But in case there was some kind of a malfunction within the steering actuators or the computer system, we can MEL it, minimum equipment list. The main landing gear steering system can be locked out and aircraft can be dispatched. But we got lucky and the fault did clear. And there you go. I put the link back together, reconnected the cannon plug, and it was good to go. Now, let me try to dry up myself because it was a rainy day that day. Go upstairs and do the paperwork. But that's about it, guys. All in a day's work. Aircraft gets dispatched and everybody's safe. Take care. Have fun.